everyone and uh, extending a warm hand and uh, welcome all of you for uh, the session today which is uh, going to be very interesting and this is about uh, establishing an equity pool for employee stock option plan so before we go inside uh, just a quick introduction about myself uh, my name is jalaj i've been with the capita esop direct uh, for uh, more than the 14 years uh, have been into areas of uh, research on the equity compensation uh, designing of the program and along with that uh, i also do business development for my organization now coming to uh, the esop let's also look at uh, what is the big picture here and uh, i'm uh, the context of the big picture is uh, from the india region so if you look at the number of companies uh, who have implemented esops uh, and bifurcate this into listed and unlisted companies so we have uh, almost uh, 800 companies uh, which are uh, listed entities who have implemented stock option program on the unlisted side that number is uh, you know way higher this is around uh, 5000 plus you know companies and uh, these are uh, many of these companies are funded companies in terms of uh, liquidity so for unlisted companies we also track it so there uh, we we have seen uh, more than 6000 crores uh, plus of liquidity which is close to 1 billion dollar in the last 3 uh, 4 years uh, the growth rate the number of companies uh, which are adding uh, to the list of companies uh, implementing esop program is growing at a rate of 25 to 30% every year the value of option this is another metric so this is around 4 trillion uh, rupees uh, which is uh, uh, close to uh, 40 billion dollar uh, the number of esop holders in india is somewhere around 800000 though this number looks uh, you know low as compared to uh, the workforce which is in the organized private sector in the public sector or the government undertakings we don't see much of a prevalence of uh, Uh, equity compensation as a part of their overall total rewards now what it means uh, if if we see this in the context of uh, the industry so esops as a instruments are used uh, across all sectors uh, this is both uh, private and public uh, all sizes uh, from right from the early stage uh, to uh, you know late stage uh, to listed companies uh, it is sec sector or industry agnostic so you know we are seeing this uh, practice in all major industry verticals including uh, manufacturing services it pharma fintech saas fmcg to you know these industries are taking the lead now on the on the analyzing further as to what are the top 3 reasons why companies are issuing esops uh, we come across uh, retention and uh, reward uh, as uh, the first two you know prime objectives followed by uh, company seeking ownership alignment and also objective uh, of well sharing across uh, employees uh, in terms of uh, early stage companies the top uh, three reasons uh, that we find is uh, uh, towards building the core team uh, savings on the cash expenses and since this has become prevalent for uh, you know uh, startups uh, also those who are keen to you know raise funding rounds this has become a industry practice so with this uh, what we can say is uh, esops uh, uh, trend is uh, you know growing in india uh, though in the listed company side it is still you know 30 to 40% uh, of uh, the index companies uh, we find it's uh, it's more than the 90% of the index company the nifty 50 companies are using it but uh, on the broad you know scale is uh, still it is around 40% whereas unlisted companies this is uh, becoming more or less a practice now when we come across uh, uh, companies uh, seeking to implement the program so what are the common queries uh, that we come across uh, this slide talks about it so generally these queries are around what are the available structures direct route trust route what type of instrument uh, uh, that we have which we can implement uh, what is the timing of implementation shall we and this is from you know uh, unlisted companies before funding or after funding uh, should it be offered to you know all or shall we offer it to certain levels uh, how to set up the program uh, uh, pool basically and this is uh, what we are going to talk about 
what is the strike price uh, it should be offered whether this should be at uh, discount market price or at face value what should be the vesting duration and the conditions associated with those vestings should there be any exercise restriction again the, from an unlisted company perspective uh, uh, this uh, becomes a important uh, uh, decision point uh, around that uh, also questions uh, raised on the monetization of esop uh, basically from an unlisted company where uh, you know there is no market outside uh, for uh, employees to you know sell their shares so this uh, session we are going to concentrate more on the uh, setting up of a esop pool so what we are going to uh, see further in the the presentation is the thought process associated with setting the esop pool the industry you know practice uh, for both the listed and unlisted company what are the approvals uh, that is required and the source of equity so these are the four things uh, that will concentrate on uh i believe uh, everyone is uh, aware about uh, the life cycle of a uh, equity link uh, instrument but uh, for the uh, sake of uh, those who who may be uh, wanting to know this uh, or refresh this uh, just this slide will help us so from this uh, slide we can see there are uh, basically five steps of the five uh, events uh, that can be captured in the life cycle it starts with the granting of option where uh, the options are uh, uh, granted uh, a contractual obligation established between the employer and the employee at the time of grant the company communicates the number of options uh, the terms of the grant the exercise price vesting duration conditions if these are associated along with the exercise period Uh, the next step is the vesting where uh, the conditions associated to the grant has been fulfilled which means that the, the options are now crystallized and the employee has the right to exercise those vested options the period within which uh, this exercise has to happen is known as the exercise period so during this exercise period uh, the exercise has to be done which is the third event so at the time of exercise uh, the employee has to pay the exercise price and along with the exercise price uh, this is the first uh, stage of taxation where uh, the perquisite uh, taxation will arise which is uh, also the employee liability and uh, from a employer standpoint they have to deduct the tds so that is the third stage so employee pays uh, the exercise price and also the tax which is associated with this exercise and the company issues share so that becomes the fourth stage once the shares are issued it lands with the employee and uh, then the employee you know can decide to retain uh, sell the shares monetize it uh, the way he decides or wants uh, depending upon the market scenario so coming to this uh, next uh, slide where we'll see the thought process around uh, establishing the option pool so there are two approaches the first is the td approach or uh, you know as i call it a top down approach so basically we look at uh, uh, the esop pool from what is happening in the peer set or the industry so uh, there uh, the filters applied are uh, what is the stage of the business and accordingly uh, which companies uh, could be the likely peers Uh, the talent availability in the market for uh, you know that business along with that uh, which equity instruments are uh, more prevalent and uh, uh, how the companies are uh, granting options so basically their burn rate so that we get an idea about uh, the industry the peer set and uh, use this as a baseline while defining the option pool for our requirement uh, so that is uh, the td approach we also have uh, the other approach which is the uh bottoms up approach so basically we are uh, here we are looking at our own you know set of uh, requirement uh what has worked uh, for uh, others uh, i mean they might not uh, be the same for us they uh, these uh, option scheme would have i mean if you are if you are looking at the industry benchmarks so this industry benchmark is one side of the picture we also should look at the our own requirement which means uh, how many employees uh, what uh, depth we want to go within the organization what is the growth of the business here uh, and uh, how that growth uh, reflects into the future value along with that uh, what is the potential benefit uh, we want to you know establish for uh, the eligible participants and what is going to be the grant frequency so that is uh, that is where we become more micro and uh, look at uh, uh, the business uh, as as a whole and uh, from there we size we look to size of the pool 
so basically these are the two approaches uh, one can adopt uh, and the uh, you know uh, the hybrid is the most popular where uh, both uh, the baselining of the pool uh, from the industry eyes and the you know also reflecting on our own requirement and the sort of then setting up the pool so we are uh, so that we make a informed decision basis the information which is available now this uh, pool should serve us for uh, you know uh, period that we contemplate uh, along with that, uh, this pool should be used for uh, you know different types of grant. As you can see here, uh, I've listed out you know five grants. Uh, uh, so hiring grants, which are typically made uh, for the new joiners, along with that retention grant, uh, which are uh, time based uh, for uh, or have back end vestings. Along with that, performance grant, which uh, comes with the vesting conditions, uh, uh, where uh, these vesting conditions uh, can be a mix of both uh, individual and the business. Uh, then there is top up grants uh, where uh, corrections uh, during uh, the period following the first grant. So additional options are granted uh, to compensate the employees uh, for the certain events and uh, along with that uh, promotion grant. So basically when the level up happens for an employee and the, to that level, there are certain options which are to which uh, this employee becomes eligible. So that also you know gets added. So these are the types of grant which will uh, be made over a period for this uh, for this pool so we take that into account while sizing the pool in the first place now this is an estimate so this will keep on changing uh, where uh, if there is a deficiency the pool can be uh, augmented by taking the approval from the shareholders so let us understand this uh, from an illustration so basically uh, I'm looking at the bottom-up approach here, where uh, the potential benefit is uh, calculated by uh, applying uh, annual CTC a uh, benefit factor there. So benefit factor is uh, nothing but uh, what uh, benefit this employee should be made, and uh, this is uh, this is taken as a product from the uh, by applying this to the annual CTC. So benefit factor basically comes from the industry benchmarks. The number of options to be granted uh, once we have calculated the potential benefit is uh, by dividing that potential benefit by benefit per option. Let us understand this uh, with the help of an example. So assume uh, the participant annual CTC is uh, 25 lakhs uh, per annum. The benefit factor for this uh, role criticality, uh, the, according to the industry benchmark, comes to around 50%, which means... Uh, uh, this uh, participant should be able to make around uh, 12 and a half lakhs uh, of uh, benefit through the stock options grant. Uh, if we assume that uh, the option strike price is at market price, uh, let's assume that is uh, 100 rupee a share at the time of the grant and the, the options will vest in four years. After that, they will ex be exercised when the expected share price will be 600 rupees you know, per share. So if we see from our timeline, from the date of uh, grant, the price, uh, the share price was 100, which moves to 600 rupees after four years when the options are vested in exercise. So the gain per you know option or a share here is uh, uh, 500 rupees. So if we estimate this, and now we have to calculate the grant today. So we'll divide the, the potential benefit, which is 12 and a half lakh by 500 rupees, which will uh, help us uh, come out with a number of options to be granted which is in this example comes to around 2,500. Now, if we do this for all eligible participants and uh, we get to know what is the requirement for this year. Uh, similarly, if we do projections for the next year and the subsequent years and uh, do that uh, calculation in the similar fashion, we'll get to know what is the requirement from the pool side. And uh, that becomes, uh, you know, how the way in which we size the pool for uh, the approval from the shareholders. So uh, I hope uh, you know I, uh, you know this is uh, clear from the illustration what I was uh, you know trying to emphasize from the previous slide. Now let us look at the trends uh, in terms of uh, what listed companies and unlisted companies are doing uh, on ESA pool and source of equity. So if you see the listed companies, uh, the majority of the listed companies who uh, who have implemented are uh, within that zero to five percent uh, mark. Uh, and for unlisted companies, uh, you know, overall, the average is somewhere around 10%, 6 to 10% is what we see. So the unlisted companies have higher, you know, pool size as compared to the listed companies. Even in the listed companies, uh, the kind of burn rates that we see is also 
you know lower as compared to the global average uh, uh, there also we and that is one of the reasons uh, could be that uh, uh, the coverage uh, under the programs is uh, concentrated to certain levels it's uh, also a reflection that the schemes are not broad based whereas uh, unlisted companies scheme they have a larger pool which uh, signifies uh, expanded coverage and uh, you know since uh, they want to conserve cash uh, that also reflects that uh, they carry a higher pool size to compensate uh, uh, for uh, uh, cash component in the total reward in terms of uh, the source of equity so there are there can be two sources of equity one is uh, the fresh issue where uh, there is a dilution to the existing shareholder and the other one is uh, where there is a we buy shares from the market uh, or there is a gift from one of the shareholders so these are the two sources of equity if we see this in the context of uh, listed companies uh, uh, in 2022 when we did the survey we found that uh, market purchase uh, was on the rise whereas fresh issue you know uh, came down uh, a bit from uh, 9 percentage points uh, you know to speak of uh, whereas in case of uh, uh, in unlisted companies there also we saw that uh, there was uh, transfer from existing shareholders which uh, means that shareholder only diluted not the other shareholders so overall uh, if you see from uh, this slide uh, the dilution uh, the pool which is set aside is still lower as compared to uh, more advanced uh, economies and the global you know countries and the reasons behind is is basically uh, the concentration of uh, coverage uh, with uh, you know senior management and the uh, cxos level uh, whereas uh, you know in the global uh, companies we are seeing expanded coverage and more broad based schemes okay so we'll move to the next uh, slide which is uh, where uh, we'll see you know one of uh, uh, you know how uh, option will reflect on the cap table and uh, we also have a learning from you know this uh, illustration let's see that so the first example is where there is no esop in the company so uh, let's say there are two founders a and b they hold 10000 shares uh, 50% uh, to each assuming there is a investment which is raised let's say that investment value is uh, the money raised is 2 and a half crore uh, which reflects a 20% stake uh, you know post money so if you do the maths the post money valuation will come to 12 and a half crores which means the pre money valuation if we deduct that 2 and a half crores money invested is 10 crore rupees now this is this will help us to discover the price per share so if the pre money valuation is 10 crore and there are uh, uh, you know 20000 uh, shares on the cap table the price discovery per share is uh, 5000 rupees uh, so the number of shares to be issued to the incoming investor is uh, we divide two and a half crores by five thousand, and we get uh, you know five thousand as a number. So this is how the cap table will look like. This is a simple case. There is no ESOPs, and uh, this will also establish what is the value of founder equity. Uh, in this case, this will come to ten crores. So we have uh, the post money valuation is twelve and a half crore, two point five you know brought in uh, by the investor. The remaining belongs to the founder. Now let us take an example where there is an ESOP scheme in the company. So let's say there is a 20% ESOP scheme to be considered in the pre-money cap table. So this is how the pre-money cap table will look like. Uh, we have uh, now the founders are diluted. Uh, they are equally diluted. So 20%, uh, you know, each founder, you know, taken the hit of 10%. So we have. Uh, 40% uh, uh, founders, uh, each founder is having 40% and then we have a pool of, you know, 20%. So we do the same calculation, uh, assuming that there's an investment uh, money coming in is uh, 2.5 crore for 20% 20, 20 stake. So post money valuation is 12 and a half crores. Uh, pre money valuation becomes 10 crore. The price discovery now will be less as compared to, I mean, per share, it is going to be less. The pre-money valuation is same. But since there is an ESOP pool, the shares have expanded on a fully diluted basis, which means now the founder equity, the effective valuation is 8 crore and not 10 crores that what we have seen in the previous slide. Now, this has happened because now there is an ESOP pool which has been created. So, so the next uh, is uh, about... Uh, the post money cap table, uh, how does it look like? 
So there, uh, the shares issued to the incoming investor, two and a half crores, we divide by 4,000. That is the price discovery per share. We get uh, 6,250 shares issued to the investors here. So now this is uh, how the cap table looks like, where uh, ESOP pool also gets diluted. Along with that, the shareholders have also, uh, the founders have also diluted. And the investor has, is reflected at 20%. Now there's an interesting uh, you know, fact here. Suppose this pool is not used or is partially used. What will happen if this company is being sold or there's an m &A? So if we see this on the issued capital, the issued capital is, uh, you know, A, B and investor because it's a pool assuming it is not used at all. So there uh, on the basis of issued capital, uh, A holds 38%, uh, B holds 38%, whereas the investors hold 24% on an issued capital basis because ESOP pool is... Uh, notional there is no issued equity against it and the company is being you know sold or acquired the investors are actually at a higher percentage as i mean they have bought 20 percent but they are reflected at 24 percent so this is where the uh you know the one uh, has to be cautious of uh, and uh, which means that instead of setting aside a very large pool in the beginning uh, the founders should actually spread that pool over a period. So every fundraise, they can also bring in the incremental pool so that the shareholders also dilute here. All the shareholders uh, on the cap table at that point in time also dilute. Otherwise, the entire you know dilution is borne by uh, the, 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 the founders and uh, it is not getting spread out. So uh, to avoid it uh, in the term sheets also, if this situation arises, uh, the balance in the ESOP pool should revert back to the founders so that uh, this uh, ratio, uh, this problem in this uh, ratio should not arise. So this is a learning which, uh, you know, I thought that, uh, you know, one should have uh, when we are, uh, you know, introducing ESOPs. Uh, and this, this is very evident from the cap table that we see here in this illustration. Now, coming to the regulatory, you know, framework around uh, equity compensation. So this has been you know, well settled. Uh, we have uh, SEBI regulations uh, for listed companies. And then we also have uh, Companies Act, which is applicable for both listed as well as unlisted companies. But uh, SEBI regulations, uh, you know, take over for listed companies. So more or less, uh, the two regulations are synchronized. Uh, from the equity pool standpoint, uh, there's no limit or on the quantum of equity pool. Uh, from a process uh, standpoint, uh, the shareholders approval is required. For a private company, this can be an ordinary resolution, whereas for a public company, whether this is listed, unlisted, this has to be a special resolution, which means that 75% of the shareholding should vote in favor of the resolution for ESOPs. Uh, from, the, from the sourcing of the equity, uh, the trusts are allowed to you know, buy shares from the secondary market, but there, uh, there is a limit. That limit is 5% uh, you know, of the paid up equity capital. So the limit... Uh, there's no limit on the direct or the primary issue, but there's a limit on the secondary purchases, which is 5%. In terms of uh, FEMA also, uh, there's automatic approval. So FEMA allows uh, companies to give options to uh, people who are resident outside India. So their, uh, uh, the approval process is automatic uh, till uh, the limit is within the sectoral cap uh, for that uh, specified uh, you know, industry. Uh, so where, uh, whatever is the limit will become the limit for the pool to be set aside for a person who are resident outside India, who are eligible participant under that program. So what we can say here is uh, from a regulation standpoint, uh, one is uh, the approval process is uh, the first, uh, it has to be approved by the board and RC. It will go to the shareholders uh, for approval, which is a special resolution or an ordinary resolution, as the case may be. And then uh, the NRC will or the board will, uh, you know, allocate grant to the individuals. There is no limit on the quantum uh, and the, as far as primary is considered, but uh, the limits are specified for the secondary. So more or less, uh, this is uh, synchronized uh, uh, from the pool standpoint. So I come to the last uh, slide of my presentation uh, and uh, there are three points which I want to you know, emphasize on specifically from the pool side. So uh, overall, as I said, the comparison between the Indian companies and the global peers, uh, we see a smaller pool 
uh, this uh, there could be many reasons around it but what i believe is uh, the concentration to the senior management is one of the uh, prime reason uh, the grants are not broad based which uh, this which is why the burn rates also uh, is also on a lower side as compared to uh, the global companies now this uh, should be this should be thought uh, by the companies who are introducing is a program uh, whether uh, they can the if they can the you know sense the benefit which comes by broad basing you know of uh, uh, coverage uh, where more and more employees are you know getting added uh, so there are still uh, you know a few companies who are uh, granting it to broader you know population but uh, i think there is a trend which is uh, which is uh, which is seen where uh, you know there are uh, you know large blue chip companies who are granting it to uh, you know broader Uh, base so we see that uh, getting adopted by other companies also uh, soon the coverage and the quantum of benefit and the type of instrument uh, uh, will be the key uh, to decide the size of the pool so uh, the coverage as i talk about uh, in the first point along with that what is the quantum of benefit that we want to pass so the more the quantum of benefit the more the option pool you know is likely to be and also you know what types of instruments that we are using so there are instruments which will have different uh, you know impact on uh, the dilution so depending upon whether we are using rsus or esops or sars uh, the dilution uh, or the pool requirement will also differ so in combination we'll have to see uh, the company companies uh, should ideally take a hybrid approach uh, with respect to uh the clear focus on their own you know requirement you know industry benchmarks uh, you know at times uh, can also be uh you know misleading because uh, uh, what have worked well for other companies might not work well for us uh, they would have their own set of requirements so to make it uh, to make it work i think uh, it is uh, good to have a uh, information uh, from what the industries and what are the baselines Uh, but uh, i think on top of that it is more important to look at our own uh, business requirements and the, our challenges and the reflect on it when we are setting up our pool and the, you know granting options to our employees so with this uh, this is the last slide so i just uh, conclude my you know session here uh, if there are any questions you can the uh, post it on chat we'll try to you know take it up uh, in this uh, session or else uh, we can take it offline yeah so there is a question regarding the calculation of uh, annual grant uh, there uh, the annual grant was uh, for a year so so you are right it's it's uh, it's 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 a annual grant but Uh, the example is not set to define it as a one time grant calculation you will have to do the same you know type of uh, grant calculation the next year when you are making a grant so that same uh, you know formula would be applicable uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, as i said defining a one time here i have not said it's one time frequency or uh, uh, you know annual frequency it was just to show you know how a grant uh, quantum was established now this formula can be replicated okay so i think i'll conclude here and uh, if there are any other questions uh, that you uh, want to ask you know please uh, reach out to us uh, we'll be happy to address it and uh, also uh, you know happy to uh, you know have a conversation about any of our offerings uh, that you wanted to you know discuss on so i'll take a pause and uh, you know all the best uh, uh, look forward to see you next time thank you Thank you.